ever had pain at the back of your leg where your calf meets your heel? Well, if so, it could be caused by your Achilles tendon. This is a really common injury amongst runners and one that actually needs a unique treatment style. So today I'll be addressing the warning signs of Achilles tendinopathy, how to prevent it, and if we are a little bit too late, also how to treat it. As the name alludes, Achilles tendonitis or tendinopathy is a problem with your Achilles tendon. But maybe that's not made it any clearer. What is a tendon and what is your Achilles? Well, a tendon is actually a thick fibrous band of connective tissue that connects your calf muscles into your heel. To be more precise, it's actually your soleus and your gastrocnemius muscle and it attaches them into your calcaneus, which is the bone at the back of your ankle or the back of your heel. And you can actually palpate yours pretty easily. So if you sit in with your foot at a 90 degree angle, so maybe your foot's on the floor, you run your hand down the back of your calf, you'll start to be able to, you'll get to the stage where you feel that thick fibrous band at the back of your leg and that is your Achilles tendon. It plays a rather crucial role in running, walking, jumping, anything that involves you pushing off from your foot and as a result it needs to be able to withstand huge amounts of force repetitively. Now you might have heard of some people snapping their Achilles tendon. This is rare but apparently it sounds like a gunshot going off as there's so much force going through that area and your calf muscle then will as a result shoot up your leg. But that sounds pretty gross, I don't mean to scare you and it's very rare but today we're focusing more on the chronic injury of the Achilles tendon. We've identified the affected area, so let's take a closer look at the tendinopathy. You might well have heard of terms such as tendinosis, tendinitis, and tendinopathy, and it can get a little bit confusing, but basically, tendinopathy covers all of the aforementioned, so we don't need to get any more bogged down with that. It's now time to address what's actually going on with a troubled Achilles and what the signs are for Achilles tendinopathy. It usually first presents itself as pain in the actual area during running and after running, and if very acute or severe, you might find that it's aggravated by walking either during and after. Sometimes it can be sore to touch in the area as well and you'll usually find that it's quite stiff. So if you try to stretch your Achilles tendon out, so basically bringing your toes up towards your shin bones, then that can feel uncomfortable and to, you might see some swelling around the area and a crepitus type noise if you try and move your ankle, so that basically that crunchy sort of feel. Then due to where your Achilles tendon lies on your body, you'll find that when you're asleep at night, it tends to be under less tension because you naturally sleep with your toes more pointed. As a result of that, when you go to take your first few steps in the morning, you're putting your ankle through that full range of movement and that can be really uncomfortable until it starts to ease off and warm up a little bit. And the same goes for if you're sitting for prolonged periods of time, those first few steps afterwards really need to be easy and gradually because it will be very stiff. But on the opposite end of the spectrum, if you do any exercise that's too vigorous, then that can obviously make it worse. Achilles tendinopathy tends to be common in runners who increase their mileage too quickly and there's also a rise in cases of those in their 40s and this could be due to the fact that it's common for this age group to do a lot of exercise on the weekends but not have that much time to do so much during the week so their bodies aren't conditioned for that sudden increase in load. And guys, I hate to break it to you but the stats actually say that men are more susceptible to Achilles tendinopathy than women but also it does increase with age due to the fact that the connective tissue is naturally getting a little bit more brittle and weaker. After all of that bad news, you will be pleased to hear that there are several factors you can control, such as calf tightness and obesity, for example. And also, when it comes to your training, you need to make sure you've got a nice supported trainer that isn't worn out. You also want to keep that area warm and covered, especially when you're training in winter, and make sure you don't allow your calves to get too tight. So yes, you can control the controllables. That said, though, Achilles tendinopathy can still occur, and that's where we need an expert, because the treatment for Achilles tendinopathy is a little unusual. So I'm heading out to pick the brains of physiotherapist Claire Weller. The Achilles I know, is very unusual in the way it needs to be treated. What is so different about the treatment for an Achilles tendinopathy? It's looking at the actual tissue of the tendon. Because it's the muscle attaches then into the tendon and then into the bone, it's that bridging factor. Mm. The tendon tissue is like a spring, so it needs to be stretched but not overstretched and then recoil like what's happening with when you're walking or when you're propelling yourself in running. The other factor that we have to take into consideration with the Achilles is its poor circulation, so yeah. the healing is, um, takes that much longer. 
The problem is, is um, bad loading, like running and jumping too soon, is detrimental to the tendon because it can cause damage. So you need to decrease the loading and you need to therefore decrease the pain. So it's the body's um, way of making the tendon have the ability to take load. So the, the best research that has been shown for tendons initially is to get that loading and that tensile strength back in the tendon mm -hmm. is to do very slow heavy loading of the calf okay. so that you're strengthening both aspects of the calf muscle your gastrocnemius and soleus to regain the tensile strength back in the tendon and what people tend to do is do things too quickly because it hasn't got enough tensile strength which is different to the muscle and how do you know when it's ready to start loading? That's why it's good to be doing it alongside with a physiotherapist mm -hmm. so that they're slowly bringing in the eccentric loading to then gradually get the tensile strength back in that, then bringing into a contraction and then slowly working into the plyometric training before you go on to doing your running and walking. And yeah. all, well, obviously you can do your walking, but the running part. So what, what, is the ex or what exercises would you prescribe? The sort of exercises you want to prescribe for it is like putting a pillow across here, a dumbbell, taking your toes right up and then slowly, slowly lowering yourself down and doing it with a heavy weight and doing 10 to 12 reps of that three times and doing that regularly. That's one of the first exercises you want to do. So a weight on your lap, so to speak. Yes. So you're sat, sat what, knees at, knees at 90 degrees right. and, and ankles yes. at 90 degrees? Yes, that's right. And do you want to bring your, are you bringing your toes up or are you trying to drop your heels off the platform? You're bringing your heels off the platform. So your toes starts at the top and then you come off a platform to slowly get that tensile strength back into the tendon. Once you've got the tendon strength again, then you can start rebuilding it. But people try to do things too soon and it ends up, because it's tendon tissue, it's connective fibrous tissue, which is different to the muscle okay. as well. And how quickly, so just remind us how many, how many we do and, and what speed? Um, we do it very slowly and that's what they've shown with the research. You do 10 to 12 and you um, roughly reps and you do that three times and you would do that two to three times during the day. And how heavy a load? Quite heavy actually. They, they, they've shown that you want a real sort of like sandbag or something really quite heavy oh, on you heavy, and yes. a little child or something like that <laughs> on you to just end up just getting that low. So it's not too light because yeah. the research that you need to get the tensile strength in that before you start trying to do the okay. plyometric work, which people then start doing the running and um, too quickly and that's why they then go around yeah. in that vicious cycle. And and I know it's kind of you know, individual but can you give a rough idea of how we pro would progress from that and how many weeks you'd have to be doing and how often well, you before would you do can that, start? You would probably do that for a good week to ten days of doing that one plus a standing one where you're bringing in your gastrocnemius and soleus loading it with your body weight. But and that's just down to so 90 degrees. Sure, yeah, because if you've got an Achilles problems, you don't really want to overstretch it at that time because you need the tensile strength to get that elasticity back in the area through. Okay. Then you come back to your physio and then they progress it on depending on whether you're getting any symptoms and they bring in some concentric exercises. Once they know that the tendon is nicely healed and you're not getting any symptoms, then you'll bring in your plyometric hopping through because you do need that elasticity okay. again to get that spring movement through with your running and the other factor is always with training when you're doing running is making sure that you've got your strengthening program and your loading program in there at least twice a week to yeah. make sure you're getting the tensile strength and the loading and going to the gym and doing the strengthening program has been shown to be doing that twice will make a difference to oh. you um, and final question I think is what are the warning signs if you you know you've got some niggle or something when when do you know that this could be an Achilles tendinopathy and it needs to get treated? You've got to be really careful if you're seeing any increase in swelling around the paratendon as the tendon comes in, if there's any, any hotness, warmth around the area, redness, difficulty when you're trying to go up onto your toes and it really hurts. You don't want to, with tendons, you don't want to try and run through that area because you do need to get the loading back in that tendon. Okay. The other thing is if it is really burning and you're getting a lot of cramping, um, you do need to be careful because you can have that bit where you don't push off and you suddenly get that big kick in the back of the calf, which could be a partial rupture or a full rupture. And okay. you definitely need to go and see a sports physiotherapist or the doctors because there's a couple of tests that they can test to uh, see if it's... Um, 
And is there any is there any way that's really obvious to tell whether it might be a calf problem or an Achilles problem? Because obviously they, there's such different treatments, but without going to see a professional. The, the thing is, the problem with tendons is it can be something you've done a couple of months ago, so you right. don't pick up on it, and then it slowly, slowly builds. With the calf muscle, you tend to feel that you've pulled it straight okay. away and you get the bruising, and you actually just get weakness in that muscle straight away. Okay. That's why when people are upping their mileage with marathons and everything, mm. they don't realise they're getting a slight tendinopathy. Okay. And you've also got to obviously, like you've said, be careful with the trainers that the tab mm. is not going into the back or any compression on the tendon because it can build over a period of time. Whereas muscular injuries are much easier to pick up because they happen instantaneously. Yeah. So you might have done okay. something two, three months ago and thought nothing of it, and then suddenly you're getting this pain. Oh, that's good to know. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Claire. Well, a big thank you to Claire for her expert advice there. And as you can probably tell, Achilles tendinopathy is a slow recovery process. So I would seriously recommend doing all you can to prevent it in the first place. And if you do have any early warning signs, then listen to them and do what you can about it now to avoid too much frustration in the long run. And if you have been unfortunate enough to have an Achilles problem and you've come out the other side and you've recovered from that injury, then let us know how you got on, what worked for you, and you can share those in the comments section below. And whilst you're there, give us a like and a follow.